Hi guys, it's Tracy again over at DMU Studios. In my last tutorial, I covered how to add product types and products in Drupal Commerce. I also touched on product attributes and variations. I wanted to spend some time explaining product displays so that you can thoroughly grasp the concept of products versus product displays. A product display is essentially any entity with a product reference field to display your products to your customers. Product displays can be taxonomy vocabularies, views, users, but most commonly nodes. A key understanding of Drupal Commerce is that it separates products from the product display. And as you can recall from my last tutorial, we've built a product type and added products to that product type. Yet there's no public means to see or purchase your products yet. That's where the product display comes in. Drupal Commerce breaks products out from product displays for a number of reasons, but it essentially allows products to be more versatile. In my last tutorial, our boutique sold wines. We priced different vintages of the same wine at different price points and included different images for the different vintages. This represents a variation in the product itself, but it also succinctly represents one of the advantages of breaking out products from the product display. For instance, I have two vintages of the same type of wine, but I don't want to display these vintages as completely separate products, even though technically they are. So let's dive into creating a product type for our wine. We'll navigate from structure to content types, and we'll select add content type. I'm going to name this content type wine product display. I'm going to remove the promotion option and I don't want to display the author and date information on my product. And I'm going to close the threading for comments and save and add fields. You can now customize the fields on your product display content type as you need, though you must add a new field called product reference, so I'll do that now. And as you can see, there's a new option for the field type, product reference. And I'm going to change this to select list, save. Now I do want to render the field for my reference product when viewing this entity, so I'll leave that checked. I am going to require this field and I am going to limit the product types that can be referenced to just wine. If you have a product display that's more generic, you can leave this open. And I'm going to change the number of values to unlimited. Save. Next, you want to configure the product display settings. So I'll select Manage Display. As you can see, there are some additional fields on the display settings now. For my product reference, I want to hide the label. I want to leave the format as the Add to Cart form, but I want to edit the settings to display a text field quantity widget on the Add to Cart form. Update. Uh, I do want to move the image above the product reference as well as the price. And because earlier we selected the attribute settings for the vintage, I actually don't need this, this one to be visible. Save. Okay, now it's time to add my individual product displays by adding nodes to this content type. So I'll go to content, add content, wine product display, and I know that I have a Pinot Noir and a Pinot Blanc, so I'm just going to add the Pinot Noir, add a description, and select my Pinot Noir, select Save. As you can see, I have my Pinot Noir, my description, my image, the price, and the quantity with an Add to Cart link. Now we're going to add the Pinot Blanc to the content. Add content, wine product display, Pinot Blanc, and I have two Pinot Blancs and I'm going to select both and select save. As you can see we have our title, our description, our image. If you recall from my previous tutorial video, on the vintage field settings, we selected 
to use this field as an attribute setting with select list option, which is what you see here. If I select a different vintage, my image and my price will update. As I mentioned earlier, breaking out products from product displays has many advantages. And this is a great example. My 2015 and my 2014 vintage of the Pinot Blanc are two separate products that I sell, and they both have different stock levels. By adding it to a product display, I allow the Pinot Blanc to be classified as a singular wine with different product variations, but I'm still able to track the individual stock levels of each wine. And my customers can view my product in a singular display. In addition to this product display, I can also create view listing that lists all of my products while also keeping track of the individual stock levels of my products. That concludes my video on product display. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching.